Hello everyone. Uh, a few weeks ago I made a video where I added some solar panels on top of the truck and I set them up, connected them to this Yeti 1500X um, unit and was able to add some miles to the range um, of the battery in the truck. So now what I've done is I've started an experiment where I've created this unit. I just put together this board and attached these uh, things to it. Uh, this is not going to be how it looks in final form. In final form it'll be mounted to the truck somewhere and grounded properly. Right now I just have this uh, lead that goes out so that you can connect chassis to ground. So here this is uh, a Victron Smart Solar uh, MPPT 150 35. I wanted to get the 45 which will allow 45 amps to go out to a battery bank but in this case the this 35 was on sale so i picked that up it should work fine for now for what i'm trying to do uh, technically this can go up to 2000 watts of power from the solar panels it'll take up to 150 volts uh, 12 volts and the same number of amps it's going to be more if you have higher voltage but the same number of amps you're going to get more power this is a solar ends combiner box. And I'm not sure why they call it a combiner box because it's really just taking a negative and positive in. It's not like taking multiple branches in like from different um, panel, different groups of panels. But uh, so it's really just a switch. It just keeps everything off. If, if the solar panels are connected, it'll keep everything off until it, I'm ready to go live with solar power and then I can switch it on. This is uh, just sort of a generic 2000 watt inverter. It's got two uh, 110 volt um, outlets on it that have a 15 amp limitation. Um, 15 amps uh, at 120 volts is only gonna be about 1800 watts. But so if I really was were, wanted to try and send 2000 watts um, to the charger and into the truck, I do have, it does have the option of direct wiring to the unit so that you can bypass that 15 amp limitation. But right now, since I'm only going to be using like 600 watts of panels and I'll have the charger set at like 600 or at like six amps, um, then this should be fine uh, just using the 110 outlet with the 15 amp limitation. And then turn it around and on the back I have a battery bank. These are two uh, Fuel Zero 48 volt 13 amp batteries. These are the cheapest and smallest um, 48 volt batteries that I could find. The cost of these two together was cheaper than the next cheapest option which was um, 48 volt 50 amp hour battery which I think was like $800. These are paralleled together so that it's 48 volts but I double the amps to uh, 26 amps instead of 13. Similar to what I did a few weeks ago I'm going to set up some solar panels on the truck. I'm going to hook them up to this uh, solar ends combiner box but I'm going to try a similar test to um, the test I did with the Yeti 1500X except with this homemade special and see if uh, I can solve some of the problems and limitations I had with that uh, with this unit. And if I don't, well, then I can modify it and keep changing it until I get it right. So I've got the panels all configured. They're set up on the truck. I've got my homemade charging unit. Um, and I'm going to be checking it throughout the day because uh, I just I haven't fully used it yet. So I'm going to make sure it doesn't get too hot. So I've got a thermometer where I'm going to be checking the temperature. Um, also, this smart solar, um, this Victron unit has uh, is Bluetooth enabled. So there's an app that I have on the phone that lets me get all the readings um, for the panels, the, how much power they're producing, how much uh, power is going to the battery, and so on. So what I'm going to do now is repark the truck out on the street because that's where I'm going to get the most sun for today. All right. So I've moved the uh, truck to a place where it's going to get sun most of the day. 
Um, it's still pretty early though, so I'm still getting a lot of shade on these back panels. But, uh, and I'm all, I checked the um, controller and I'm only getting about uh, 15 watts. But hopefully that'll change. Also, I checked the truck and I'm at 68% uh, of charge and 144 miles of range. Right now the battery bank is about, it's 39 to 40%. Um, I'm going to let the battery bank charge up probably to 90% before I start up the inverter and uh, start charging the truck. Um, I did install a kilowatt meter on here, so hopefully I'll get a better idea of how many kilowatts I actually, or watts, I actually supply to the truck for the day. The battery bank is charged up to about 95%. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in the charger and start charging. I'm going to flip the inverter on. And it's showing that uh, I've selected six amps. By the way, if you haven't already gotten one of these uh, adjustable amperage chargers, it's really a good thing to have especially if you're going to be um, out adventuring and you want to stop maybe at like a, a campground to use the RV hookup uh, because a lot of those will have a limitation where if you go over a certain amount, it'll, um, it'll trip the circuit breaker. So being able to select how many amps you draw is really a handy thing to do. Plug it in. Smart solar controller is showing that I'm getting about 470 watts. Wish I was getting more, but I think it might have something to do with the angle of the solar panels. Uh, they're sort of tilted away from the sun the way I part. Maybe uh, a little bit later in the day I'll be getting more power. Controller is about 100 degrees. The inverter's about 92. What are these panels? 127. It's after 4.30 and we're at 2.3 kilowatts. And the panels are mostly in shade now. So I think I'm going to go ahead and power down. Last time I checked, it looked like I had gained something like uh, eight miles. All right, so what did I find out? I think I found out that the design for my solar charging system is pretty sound. Um, this the way I have it set up turns out to be... Uh, not ideal because when the inverter heats up, uh, the exhaust fans blow onto the um, <laughs> controller unit, which uh, would tend to make it hotter. But uh, I temperature checked them throughout the day and they didn't get, they were up to 100, 108, something like that, but uh, they didn't get extremely hot. And the inverter would come on and then go off again. But of course, I was only running. Um, seven or eight amps through it. It'll be a different story if I have a whole array that's producing like 2,000 watts. And even though the voltage is higher, this system is set up so that you can have a higher voltage go through and reduce the amps so that you can use uh, lower gauge wires. I wasn't real happy with the uh, number of watts that were produced by the panels. I think that's just the nature of the panels lying flat on the surface of the toenail cover or on the roof and the sun hits it at an angle versus if you had the panels tilted up towards the sun so that the sun rays were hitting the panels in a perpendicular manner. However, I have an idea for solving that with the um, Overlander build where the, there may be a way to have the panels in such a way where they can tilt. And speaking of the overlanding rig, um, so the next video is going to be uh, the overlanding rig with the panels all mounted to the roof and 
since this is supposed to be an overlanding rig, I'm going to ditch the um, tonneau cover at this point and go with a roof rack over the bed and a roof mounted tent. So if that's something you're interested in seeing, click like, click subscribe, and hit the notify button so that you'll get notified when I put that video out. It should be coming up in a few weeks.